Hi, my name is Lily. I'm one of the young critics chosen by the Poetry Society and the T.S. Eliot Prize to review one of this year's T.S. Eliot Prize 2022 shortlists. And I'm so lucky to be reviewing James Connor Patterson's Bandit Country. It's important to touch on the title just for a moment. So Bandit Country was a pejorative term coined by the Northern Ireland Secretary of State, Merlin Rees in 1974. Terms like bandit country were used preemptively to try and justify later atrocities committed by the British establishment. It's not just a political anthology, it's actually really individual and reflects Patterson's own journey navigating and identifying his way as a young man. We don't have time to look at everything in detail, so I've picked out three poems that I want to do deep dives in to discuss what makes this anthology so fantastic. So we'll be looking at you, about suffering and postscript. One from the beginning of the anthology, one in the middle and one right, right at the end. Yew is the third poem in the anthology and comes from the Irish name for Newry, which means the yew tree at the head of the strand. It almost reads like an Ozymandias type landscape. We've got this vast, desolate expanse. Whereas Ozymandias is the traveller discovering the decaying remains of an empire that once was, Yew is Patterson's mythologised account of the founding of Newry. So we have a saint planting the yew bulb that grows to be Newry. There are a few lines that I want to look at. They happen to be the only words italicised in the poem, so take from that what you will, but they do stand out. The first words are what the saint says after he has planted the bulb. He doesn't just say the words, he invokes them, which really reinforces this mythological aspect to the story. Though only the smallest of seeds yet growing shall become the tallest of all things, a tree. These words span across four lines, so you can also visually imagine the roots of the tree laying its foundations as it continues to grow. At the culmination of the poem, the tree is bursting further into life and striving to reach heaven. So it grows greater and greater and higher and higher up. But no matter how high it climbs, there's a bittersweet message to the final line, my God, this is where I'm rooted. And I think this itself is a conclusive moment in the anthology as a whole. No matter how far away Patterson is physically from Newry, that is where his roots are. No matter how transformative different periods of our lives are, our roots remain fixed. So we're now going to look at About Suffering. The poem itself is structured after WH Arden's Musée de Beaux Arts. I like this idea that Patterson's poem is this response or a continuation of the conversation around Arden's Musée de Beaux Arts. There's loads of lists in this poem and I'm going to pull out one in particular. The final line of the first stanza reads, Born to cars, wash pots, empty kegs, cinder blocks. I think the everyday objects are meant to read as ephemeral littering. They're cluttering the space of the poem. This reminds me of Yeats's poem, The Circus Animal's Desertion, which was written near the end of his life. And he recounts in a list the physical items that have cluttered the poetry that he's written. So even though the landscape's changing, Patterson uses the verb scattered to describe kind of where everything ends up. The physical items themselves, individual entities, remain somewhat fixed. As the final poem in the entire anthology, Postscript does something really interesting with poetic borders. The title reflects the fact that the poem doesn't really fit in with the main body of the collection, yet examining what lies beyond the border is still a valuable exercise. Yes, borders are divisive, but what Patterson does really effectively is he considers the opposite of that, and the fact that borders are not just divisive, but they can foster and cultivate communities that remain with you for your lifetime. There are two emotions named, on the penultimate line of postscript, terrified and elated. Why are they nestled so closely together? That got me thinking, what exists between these two extremes? How can they coexist? And what actually exists is everything. The fact that two extreme and opposite emotions close out the collection, and not only do they close it out, they exist within the postscript of the collection anyway, is a really interesting open-ended way for the anthology to finish. Patterson is attempting to define himself. Patterson is reflecting on his own identity. Even as we seek to define ourselves, everything will change, the landscape will evolve once again, and we'll need to go back and add another postscript. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to find out more about this book, the T.S. Eliot Prize, or the work that the Poetry Society does for young writers, please check out the link in the description. Thank you.